Welcome to room nine, the region's largest classroom. I am Mrs. Wright and I teach at Monroe Elementary in St. Charles. Today, you know it, I will be teaching a reading lesson meant for sweet second graders, but as always, everyone of all ages, young, old, grandmas, grandpas, aunts, uncles, learning styles, learning abilities is welcome in teaching in room nine to learn with us. So I am excited to continue um, doing author's purpose today. So remember our objective is to analyze author's purpose um, in fiction and nonfiction. So um, this week while we have been reading, um, I have been like modeling for you how I'm thinking through and analyzing things. Um, we've been doing a little bit of writing with it, um, like using evidence to say why we think um, that the reason is for writing. Um, so we're going to continue doing that because I think the best type of learning is to watch someone think and you can learn from them. Okay, so when I'm trying to help my students learn, I watch them think and I watch them analyze and then I analyze their thinking and pick a point to coach them on. Isn't that crazy? I think about their thinking. Crazy! So I think that's the most powerful way to learn is to watch and listen to someone think aloud and then um, to analyze it. So this whole read aloud, I'm gonna think aloud for you um, on just what I'm thinking, how I'm trying to maybe figure out if this author is informing, entertaining, explaining, describing, or persuading. Um, so you're just gonna see how I think through things and you probably do things that are very, very similar. So let me remind you that the author's purpose is the author's reason for writing something. In nonfiction, mostly, not always, um, the reason for writing would be to inform, to explain, or to describe. Sometimes I also think they might want to persuade you, right? Um, in fiction, the reason for writing would be to inform, persuade, or entertain, okay? So generally, I feel like fiction, a lot of the time, um, is to entertain. It's just something that's funny and silly um, and fun to read, great to read, right? So depending upon the type of reader that you are, you might like things that inform, explain, or describe more than you like things that persuade and entertain. I personally, I love to read books that entertain me. That's just the kind of reader I am. But a lot of my students, they love to read nonfiction and they love to read books that are teaching them, informing them, of all kinds of new information. So we are going to read this book today, A Place for Turtles, written by Melissa Stewart. And this is being used with permission from Peach Tree Publishing. Here is the blurb. It says, turtles have lived on Earth for more than 220 million years. Find out what we can do to make sure there is always a place for turtles. Did you know that some turtles can only live in sandy desert areas with low, with plenty of low shrubs? I think shrubs are like low bushes, kind of. In the past, hundreds of thousands of loggerhead turtles died each year fishing in nets. Every year, people catch more than 20,000 box turtles to enter them in local races? I did not know that. Okay, now I'm turning on my thinking aloud. Sometimes I do this, sometimes I don't. Today I'm gonna be really um, aware to think my thoughts aloud. So it's gonna feel a little different for me because I don't always say them out loud, but I want you to listen to how I'm figuring out 
what the author's purpose is, okay? Okay, here's another blurb. A place for turtles. Turtles make our world a better place, but sometimes people do things that make it hard for them to live and grow. In a simple yet informative language, hmm, so that already makes me think that the author is giving me information about a topic. A Place for Turtles introduces young readers to, a, to ways human action or inaction can affect turtle population and opens kids' minds to a wide range of environmental issues. Describing various examples from the Alabama red-bellied turtle to the desert tortoise, the text provides an intriguing look at turtles. That means intriguing means like interesting. The ecosystems that support their survival and the efforts of some people to save them. In the back of the book, the author, the author offers a readers a list of things they can do to help protect these special creatures in their own communities. Okay, so already I'm thinking that I don't think the author is trying to entertain. Um, they want us to enjoy their writing because I think every author wants to wants their reader to enjoy the writing, but I don't think the author is trying to entertain here. I do think the author is, is using lots of things, right? So the author is informing us. They're giving us information about the topic, turtles. They're describing, or I think they're going to describe who, what, when, where, why, and might use the five senses to do so. They're explaining telling you how or why. I think this one's gonna be really big in this story because it says right here, there's various examples. So I think there's gonna be a lot of how and why. But I also really think that the author is persuading us to try and make sure that we're taking care of our environment so turtles can live. It's just what I think, thinking out loud. Here we go, A Place for Tur Turtles, written by Melissa Stewart. Turtles make our world a better place, but sometimes people do things that make it hard for them to live and grow. If we work together to help these special creatures, there will always be a place for turtles. A look at turtles. Turtles are closely related to snakes, lizards, and crocodiles. They belong to a group of animals called reptiles. Some turtles spend most of their lives on land. Other turtles live in lakes, rivers, or the ocean. But all turtles hatch from tough, leathery eggs laid on land. Newly hatched turtles are tiny, except for their size. They look just like their parents. Okay, well, that page... If we work together to help these special creatures, kind of sounds like persuading. Okay, like all living things, turtles need safe spaces to raise their young. Some turtles have trouble building nests when, they're new, when new kinds of plants spread into their home habitat. When people find ways to control the new plants, turtles can live and, excuse me, turtles can live and grow bog turtle. Because purple loosestrife has pretty purple flowers and can be used as a medicine, European settlers brought it to North America. But when thick clusters of loosestrife began growing in wetlands, bog turtles couldn't find sunny spots for their nests. In 1997, people started using beetles to control the loosestrife. Now bog turtles have many more good places to build their nests. Hmm. Well, I feel like that page was definitely informing. It was telling us about safe places. Hmm. Let's keep going. Young turtles don't stand a chance when people add fish to lakes and ponds. When people collect newly hatched turtles and raise them in safe places, turtles can live and grow. Western pond turtle. As Americans moved west in the 1800s, they added largemouth bass to the lakes and ponds near their new homes. These new fish needed lots of food, and tiny, tiny turtle hatchlings made a good meal. 
By 1990, there were only 150 western pond turtles left in the entire state of Washington. When people noticed the problem, they began collecting the hatchlings and taking them to nearby zoos. Zoo employees cared for the young turtles until they were large enough to survive on their own in their native habitat. Today, more than a thousand western pond turtles live in Washington. Hmm. Well, that felt like, don't stand a chance. People add, people collect. I don't think it's describing. Again, I think it's informing again. Adult turtles face many dangers too. A sea turtle can die if it gets trapped in a fishing net. When fishing crews use nets that have special escape hatches, turtles can live and grow. Loggerhead turtle. In the past, hundreds of thousands of loggerhead turtles died each year in fishing nets used to catch shrimp. But in 1988, the U.S. Congress passed a law that requires fishing nets to have a turtle excluder device a sort of trap door that turtles can use, but shrimp can't. Since that law was passed, the number of net-related turtle deaths has decreased nearly 70%. Hmm, interesting. Trap door is like a back way for um, someone to get out. Hmm. So again, giving me more information, I do think it's again persuading us to want to take care of uh, but i think it's explaining too how or why it's important maybe authors can have more than one purpose because plastic shopping bags look like jellyfish sea turtles sometimes eat them by mistake the plastic bag can the plastic can clog the turtle's stomach causing it to starve to death when people stop using plastic bags, turtles can live and grow. Leatherback turtle. In the mid-1980s, stores across North America switched from paper shopping bags to plastic ones because plastic never breaks down. Over, five, over time, millions of shopping bags ended up in the ocean where they could harm leatherback turtles. Today, many families bring their reusable cloth bags to the grocery store. Small changes like this can help save sea turtles. Hmm. Okay, pause. Time out, I mean. Someone's staring at me. Molly, come here. Now she walked away. Molly, come here. Come say hi. You wanna say hi? Please. Every time you do this, you make me look like a crazy person. Come here. Please come here. Where? She was staring at me while I was reading, and then I call her name and she goes away. And now she's smelling books. What is it? You wanna smell it? Come here. Come smell it. Smell it. I'm trying to lure her. This chair is so squeaky. Come here, smell it. Okay. I don't have time for your games. I'm trying to teach these friends about author's purpose, Molly. Come on, they haven't seen you in like weeks because you've been playing this game with me. Oh, she just walked out of the room. Some turtles taste so delicious that people eat too many of them. I've never eaten a turtle in my life. That's what I'm thinking, and I never would. When lawmakers stop people from hunting the tasty reptiles, turtles can live and grow. Jeez. Diamondback. Turpapin? Turp? In the late 1800s, turtle soup was so popular that people in Maryland and Virginia caught close to 100,000 diamondback turpapins every year. By the 1920s, there were almost none of these turtles left. Many restaurants stopped serving turtle soup, but some people continue to eat turpapins. Today, it is illegal to hunt diamondback turpapins in nine states and the turtles are struggling to survive. Hmm. I, I'm just, I can't even f try and figure out a purpose besides I would never, ever, ever eat turtles. Never. Nope. 
Many people let their dogs run free when they go hiking in natural areas, but curious dogs can injure turtles and other small animals. When hikers keep their dogs like Molly, come here Molly. When hikers keep dogs like you on leashes, turtles can live and grow. Painted turtle. When pet owners go to forests, wetlands, and other wild places, they like to let their dogs want, run free. But dogs are hunters. Their natural instincts tell them to chase and attack smaller animals. Keeping dogs on a leash can save the tur lives of turtles and other wild creatures. I'm making a connection to my dog right now because I'm telling you, my dog would be more um, scared of the turtle than she would to catch it. Wouldn't you, Molly? Come here, Molly. Guys, I promise you she's right here. You're, you're distracting us. Molly, come here. Molly, come here. Come here. Please just say hi to the children. They just want to say hi to you. You nudged me while I was reading. You're playing games. Come here. Come here. She listens so well. Okay, so she's getting very close to me. I might try and grab her if you see any sudden movements, that's why. And no, she's not going to be hurt. She loves this kind of attention. Don't you? Yes, you're such a good girl. So I'm still thinking that this book is mostly to inform. There's a lot of telling us how and why, though, to explain something, but I still feel like the author is trying to inform. Okay, some turtles have such colorful bodies and shells that people like to keep them as pets. <laughs> when people stop collecting these beautiful reptiles, turtles can live. Red-eared slider turtle. Because red-eared slider turtles have colorful bodies and shells with interesting patterns, many pe people are tempted to take them home. But a turtle is a wild animal. It can't form a special bond with people. And living in a terrarium that's like a, a um, it's like a uh, fish tank, but it's for like reptiles. It's stressful. It is against the law to catch or sell young turtles, but it's best to let all turtles, even the older ones, live in their natural habitat. Many people think it's fun to watch turtle races, what? At fairs, picnics, and rodeos. But when turtles from different places come into contact with one another, they can get sick. Did not know that. When people learn the truth about these races, turtles can live and grow. Box turtle. Each year, people catch 15,000 to 25,000 box turtles and enter them in local races. I did not, I did not know this. During each race, turtles from different locations may pass germs to one another. Many turtles get sick and die after a race. Even if the turtles stay healthy, they will have trouble surviving if they are not returned to the exact same spot they were found. What? Racing turtles may seem like fun, but turtles are better off when people leave them alone. I knew none of this. This is all brand new information to me. I had no idea people raced turtles. Wow. People or turtles have dark bodies and move slowly. People driving cars near turtle habitats may not see them until it's too late. When people build turtle proof fences along busy highways, turtles can live and grow. Alabama red belly turtle, red belly. Even though people have been working to save Alabama red belly turtles for many years, these animals still face many dangers. Between 2001 and 2006, more than 400 Alabama red-bellied turtles were killed trying to cross a four-lane highway called Mobile Causeway. In 2007, workers built a 4.3-mile long fence along the highway so turtles couldn't wander into the road. Lots of new information for me. Turtles have trouble surviving when their natural homes are destroyed. Some turtles can live in sandy desert areas with plenty of low shrubs. 
When people protect these natural places, turtles can live and grow. Desert tortoise. In, 1950s, in the 1950s, Las Vegas became a popular place to live. As the city grew, workers built homes, businesses, and parking lots on the land where desert tortoises lived. Soon, the turtles were in trouble. In 1989, the United States Fish and Wildlife Service added desert tortoises to the endangered species list. Now, people are working hard to protect the desert areas where the turtles live. Other turtles can only survive in shallow marshes and ponds. When people create new wetlands, turtles can live and grow. It says, Blanding's Turtle. In 1996, LaGrange, New York needed to make their high school larger, but the only place to expand was a wetland where Belang's turtles lived. To solve the problem, workers carefully moved soil and plants to a nearby location and created another wetland for the students, for the turtles. Now students keep a close watch on the turtles in their habitats. So far, the turtles seem to like their new home. I still really feel like this whole book is to inform. When too many turtles die, I just think that because everything I've learned is mostly new in this book. When too many turtles die, another living things may also have trouble surviving. That's why it's important to protect turtles in places where they live. Other animals need turtles. Turtles are an important part of the animal food chains. Turtle eggs are a good source of food for snakes, lizards, otters, raccoons, badgers, rats, herons, and gulls. Adult turtles are eaten by coyotes, foxes, weasels, minks, skunks, possums, eagles, osprey, alligators, crocodiles, and sharks. Without a thriving population of turtles, many other creatures will go hungry. Turtles have lived on Earth for more than 220 million years. Sometimes people do things that can harm turtles, but there are many ways you can help these special creatures live far into the future. Helping turtles. Do not catch and keep turtles. Let them live in their natural environment. Do not buy turtles at a pet store. Turtles are wild animals and should live in their natural homes. If someone gives you a turtle, do not re release it in a wild place. It could make other turtles sick. Do not throw trash into any body of water. Do not pour household cleaners or other chemicals down the drain. Join a group of people working to protect or restore rivers, lakes, streams, ponds, or ocean areas near your home. Okay. I really feel like this book did all three. You want to know why? Here's what I think. Inform. The author gives you information about a topic. I learned so much about turtles, right? I learned <clears throat> like facts I never knew. I didn't know there were things as turtle races. I didn't know people ate turtle soup. I learned lots of things. I also think that the author was trying to explain how or why. And I think she did a really good job of this. She explained why turtles are important, how turtles are important, why and how you should keep them in their own natural environment. She did a really good job of explaining the importance of keeping places for turtles and how if turtles go away, it impacts other food chains. And I also think this, I do think that the author was trying to persuade. I think the author wanted us to think, feel, believe, act that turtles are super important. I really, really think that. So I want you right now to grab a piece of paper and I want you to decide, do you really think, which one? Persuade, explain, inform. Which one do you think? The author, oopsies, is writing to 
because. Which one do you think? The author is writing to inform, explain, persuade. And why do you think that? The author is writing to... Molly, please don't start barking. <coughs> Molly! I'm in the middle of a lesson! Can't trust this dog. Oh my gosh. So the author is writing to... Which one do you think? Persuade, inform, explain. And tell me why. Yes, friends, I agree with you. I think any of these answers is correct. You're probably right. It's probably more to inform or explain and probably a little bit more explain um, because it's not like she's just giving us straight facts about turtles. She's telling us all this information and then explaining the how or why. So you know what? You guys are probably right. It's probably more that this author is writing to explain. I am so impressed by your work today, and I hope you enjoyed watching me think aloud for you. I'm sorry about Molly's barking, and I'm sorry that she's being rude and won't come say hello. So I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Teaching in Room 9 is made possible with support of Bank of America, Dana Brown Charitable Trust, Emerson, and viewers like you.